Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Today we are celebrating the seventh Sunday of Easter. If you do happen to have a cell phone or other electronic device with you, if you could please be sure that is silenced at this time. We would appreciate that. Thank you. Our gathering songs on the program for today's Mass come to the banquet. Please stand as we begin our celebration and song. Oh God. 
reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us, that he has given us his spirit. Moreover, we have seen and testified that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God, and God in him. The word of the Lord.
We celebrate what she and so many have done in the graduation of their college and high school careers. We especially celebrate those during these last two years during this challenging pandemic. Perhaps this is a first step to greater things, to that through the grace of God, they are becoming more fully the wonderful people God has called them to be. As I reflected on our readings for this weekend, this image of sending our children off to college came to mind of how Jesus speaks of the apostles in the gospel. He says, none of them was lost. Jesus says this in his prayer to his father when speaking of the apostles. He wants them to realize that he cared for them and loved them so that their joy may be complete. We hear this throughout our Easter season from Jesus' final discourse in John's Gospel. In this passage, towards the end of the discourse, Jesus wants to give his apostles some final instructions before he departs to take up his cross and die for them. So he tells them these instructions in a prayer. He wants them to understand that he has given them everything that they need. He has protected them. They did not belong to the world, but were living in it. They were called to another kingdom, not from this world. He has given them the truth, the word of God. And probably most of all, Jesus has given them the Father's love. He will never leave them or us, ever. The apostles are his own. They are like family to him, and now he is sending them out into the world to be his witnesses. A few days ago, I noticed that a neighbor and friend of ours was highlighted on a local news program. His name is Bill Brown, and they dubbed him the Cicero Breadman. He was on the show because, as a good Catholic Christian, he decided during the pandemic that he would bake raisin bread and give a free loaf of bread to those he felt needed it. I know this because I was a recipient. He just felt that we could all use something to help us feel good during these difficult times. He is up to over 300 loaves of that bread that he has baked and given out. Something he said in his interview really struck me. He said that he remembered reading one time, if everyone were to just do one deed out of love for someone else, we could make this world so much better. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? A number of years ago, I spoke about Bill for a different reason. For a number of years, Bill taught a class called Tools for Change in high school, and that several of my children had taken the course. I highlighted him because the class gave the students practical ways of changing this world to be the place that they would like to live in. Ironically, in some ways similar to that, Bill is doing that himself in baking raisin bread and giving it out to others. In our gospel today, Jesus shows our connection to one another in his prayer to the Father. I did not lose one of them. I sent them out into the world, and I gave them my love for the rest of the world. This is what we are called to do. Jesus' greatest gift, and the way that he shows his love for each of us, is in his gift of the Eucharist. That is best, his best gift. This weekend, we have 20 children who will celebrate their first Holy Communion. That first receipt of his most precious gift, himself. It may not seem like much, a simple wafer, a drink of wine, but there is so much more in that presence than meets the eye. The love that is in, in it is greater than any material gift that we could hope for. Perhaps so often 
we may take it for granted. But Jesus' words today in our gospel tells it all. He says to his apostles that I have done all I can for you while I have been on this earth. I long to continue to be with you. This is why I give you Eucharist and the Holy Spirit, so that you will know I live within you. Receive the strength and power of my love. You can do extraordinary things in my name if you believe. I'd like to close today with a story. The young boy said, Okay, Dad, are you ready? Ready for what? His dad, the pastor, said. Dad, it's time to go outside and distribute our flyers. The da dad said, Son, it's very cold outside and it is drizzling. The 11 year old child looked surprised at his father. But, Dad, people need to know about God on rainy days. The dad said, Son, I am not going outside in this weather. With despair, the child said, Dad, can I go outside by myself, please? His father paused for a moment and then said, Son, you can go. Here are the flyers, but be careful. The excited child went out into the cold and rain, and after two hours walking in the rain and cold, he held his last flyer in his hand. He stopped in the corner to see if he saw anyone to give it to, but the streets were deserted. Then he turned and walked to the first door he saw, and he rang the bell several times, but no one came out. He turned to walk away, but something stopped him from leaving. The child turned back to the door and started ringing the bell again and knocking on the door forcefully. He kept waiting. Finally, the door was opened gently. A lady came out and with a very sad look and gently asked, What can I do for you, son? With radiant eyes and bright smile, the child said, Lady, I am sorry if I upset you, but I just want to tell you that God really loves you. And I came, <clears throat> to, I came to give you my last flyer which talks about God and his great love. The boy then gave her the flyer. She just said, thank you, son. God bless you. The next Sunday during the service, the pastor asked if there was anyone that would wish to share a testimony. In the back of the church, an old woman stood up. She said, nobody in this church knows me. I have never been here. Even last Sunday, I was not Christian. My husband died a while ago, leaving me totally alone in this world. Last Sunday was a particularly cold and rainy day, and it was also in my heart. On that day, I came to the end of my road, since I had no hope and didn't want to live anymore. Then I was going to end my life when suddenly, I heard ringing at the door and knocking and pounding. I felt compared, compelled to answer the door, and when I opened it, I saw the most angelic child tell me how much God loves me. He handed me a pamphlet, and I read it word for word. From the child's visit, I realized that I do have hope, and I am here today to thank this child for saving my life and helping me to believe in a loving God. The pastor came down from the pulpit and went to the first pew where his son was sitting and with tears in his eyes gave him a big hug for he knew he was the angel. Believe the power of God's love can transform any situation when we trust than it can. I hope we will never forget that we have in our faith in Christ and in his presence in the Eucharist. May the peace and love of Christ be with each of you.
Our response is, O oh Lord, keep us faith-filled. That Pope Francis, Bishop Lucia, Monsignor Elmer, and all our clergy will continue to guide the faithful by their compassion and knowledge as we adhere to the changes that will soon face us in our church community. We pray, O oh Lord, keep us faith-filled. That world leaders will model their earthly kingdoms after our Father's kingdom, where hostility and hatred give way to compassion and mercy. We pray, O oh Lord, keep us faith-filled. That immigrants and all the children that have been separated from their parents will be welcomed, reunited, and given the opportunity to a full life. We pray, O oh Lord, keep us faithful. That all those who have the opportunity to receive vaccinations will ask for God's guidance in making the correct choice. We pray, O oh Lord, keep us faithful. That all our first communicants will continue to grow and believe in the love that God has for them. We pray, O oh Lord, keep us faithful. That all those who are considering religious vocations will be aided by the prayers of our parishioners. We pray, O oh Lord, keep us faithful. That those who have died will reap the rewards of their stewardship, as well as Dolores Spina and Maddie and Medico, whom we remember in a special way at this liturgy. We pray, O oh Lord, keep us faithful. For all of those who pray with us at home, as well as those here gathered, that Christ's mercy will continue through our response to the needs of all our parishioners. We pray, O oh Lord, keep us faithful. Loving God, you are the source of love and mercy. Help us to express that love and mercy our thoughts, words, and actions, so that the world may see your goodness. Hear the prayers we make today and grant them according to your will through our risen and ascended Lord, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, so that we who believe that the Savior of the human race is with you in your glory, may experience, as he promised, until the end of the world, his abiding presence among us, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ your Son. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, 
and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, all the clergy, religious, and faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the glorious apostles and martyrs and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Savior and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole church what has already come to pass in Christ her head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So, announcements, uh, I'm getting into details, uh, it's probably in the bulletin, the food pantry uh, uh, is going through its uh, food supply quicker these days, uh, so any additional donation, donations are greatly appreciated. Especially canned veggies, okay? I was never a big fan of canned veggies. I like veggies, but uh, I bet I'll eat it at the food pantry. So, whatever you know, I'm very happy. Okay, thank you for your support. Um, also, the, the Capital Campaign Committee is having a, a pulled pork dinner coming up uh, on Saturday, June 5. It's uh, be three weeks away or so. Uh, from 4.30 until 7, it's $10 per takeout dinner. Forms are available in the gathering space. Looks like another winner for the Capital Campaign Committee. They did great with the pasta, great with the ham. Uh, so this looks like another good dinner. Uh, Vacation Bible School, uh, last week in July. Uh, please see the registration forms in the uh, gathering space. Uh, also, uh, I just want to touch on this in the bulletin and also the, the uh, CDC announced new guidelines as of Thursday uh, regarding mask wearing. Uh, it came out rather suddenly and uh, wasn't really expected, I don't think. Uh, at least nobody got any warning on it. So uh, Bishop Lucia uh, was asking uh, just to kind of hold things as they are. The governor is saying the same thing until we can look into it a little bit further. I know the bishops of New York State uh, like to try to act as a united body. So if uh, any changes to be made will be hopefully coming shortly. In the meantime, uh, you know, please get vaccinated. That will certainly aid, aid the uh, safety matters. Okay. Uh, also, next Sunday, is Pentecost Sunday, as I mentioned earlier. It's the birthday of the church. Uh, the day the Holy Spirit came in tongues of fire. So it's... Uh, of a tradition, custom, whatever you want to call it, to wear a bit of red on Bonnie Cross Sunday. I don't care if it's a tie or a shirt or a skirt or shoes, whatever, you know? <laughs> I like, uh, what's your face there in uh, Wizard of Oz here, you know? Wear the, <laughs> okay, so, you know, wear, wear a little touch of red, ribbon, whatever, okay. Uh, finally, in the uh, bulletin there, there's a little announcement about information seminars regarding formation for ministry. Lay people uh, like a little more training in the in the church to take a more active part in the church, and also for uh, men considering a uh, permanent diaconate. If you feel you have a call to the diaconate, uh, you might want to take in uh, one of those information for information seminars coming up uh, over the course of the year. So uh, just uh, you know, if you're interested, to take a look at that. All right, the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks to God. God.
Oh!